welcome to another Just Dorsha. And my channel is called Just Dorsha because I want to be known as Just Dorsha. I wear many titles in my life. I am a government executive. I serve as chief of staff for an elected official. I'm also president and chair of a nonprofit that is responsible for expending the hotel and motel tax of the county that I live in. I'm also a wife, a mother, a daughter, a friend. I am also a servant of God. I am many things, but to you, I just want to be known as Just Dorsha. And hopefully something that I may say and that I may do may bring peace, love, joy, or a little nugget to help you on your path because we're all here to help one another. So Just Dorsha. Peekaboo. <laughs> Oh, Sunday Backyard Farmer, if you are watching this, come to the chat because the chat is where it's at. So you will see your screen. I don't need to see your screen. It says live chat. Come there and 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 um and, and um enjoy this with the other guests that are there. Hey, G Mama Grows, and we're going to sing happy birthday to you because today is your birthday, even though I know you're probably like Dorsha. If you wish me happy birthday one more time but you are a very very special lady and i have grown to love you i have a lot of love for you g mama you have been exceptional and you know what this is your day so we're going to celebrate you peekaboo <laughs> i hope that you're having fun today g mama i hope you can tell me about something fun that you did today hey larry how are you doing Yes, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you, Mr. Tuck. Hey, Just Dorsha, looking forward to tonight's topic. I'm looking forward to sharing. Oh, you love me. I love you too, G Mama. So, Larry, today is G Mama um, Bro's birthday. So, at some point or another, before we get off of here, if you can help me to remember to remind me, because she won't, because you know she hears me sing all the time. But I'm gonna sing happy birthday to her. <laughs> And in the chat, y'all can make like little, uh, you know, celebratory uh, emojis and stuff. That'd be so fun because it's G Mama's birthday. Just working on my plants. Well, guess what? That is a lot. Um, until you have a green thumb and you have killed something, you know that working on plants, it takes work. Hey, Leslie, how are you doing? Thanks for joining us this evening. I appreciate it. Yes, son. Mm -hmm. uh, you can come and say hello. My oldest son is with us this week. Um, he's off from work. This is Amir. Hello there. Hello there. That's my 21-year-old. About to be 22. So uh, okay, he's about to be 22. Yes, yeah. yes, you are correct. He'll be 22 in September. This, let me pause for a commercial break. Um, the rice cooker. Yeah. If you can put two cups of rice yeah. um, in, inside of the rice cooker, there's like uh, numbers. So you put that much water too, and then two cups of rice, and then press white rice. And then you'll have rice for that Mississippi roast that I made and those saute um, brassicas. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for that. You know, but like I said, this is just Dorsha. This is not studio edition. This is not filtered. This is not Hollywood. This is me being me and sharing me with you and hoping that somewhere in the midst of all of this that you'll be blessed. How about that? Hey, Psalms 146, how are you doing? Today is G Mama Grow's birthday. And at some point or another, we're going to sing happy birthday to her. She's an outstanding person and I really appreciate her. She has been with me pretty much from the beginning. Um, shoot, early on when I first started YouTube, like a year ago. So thank you, G Mom. She's been a moderator and I really appreciate her. <clears throat> so tonight we're going to discuss 20 topics, uh, 20 lessons that either make you say amen or ouch. <laughs> now, if you want to play along with this in the chat, you can say amen or you can say ouch. Some of these lessons that I learned, it was a whole lot of ouch going on. 
But then once I learned the lesson, then they became just amen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it became amen. When you do not learn a lesson, God will have you repeat that test. Do you hear me? He will help have you repeat whatever you're going through, that trial, so that you will get the lesson. Because built inside of a lesson is a blessing. And not just for you, but also someone else. Hold on one second as we take another commercial break. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Two liter, I mean, the two cup for the cups, right? Inside of the yeah. rice cooker. Put it there and then you put the and then, then you put two cups of rice. Two measuring cups. Don't don't put the rice up to the two. You know what I mean? Take a measuring cup, yeah. a dry measuring cup, yeah. the stainless steel ones, and measure two things of rice and put it in the water. Oh. All right, because I know you'd be like, oh, I filled the rice cooker up to, to the line, too. I'm like, honey, no. <sighs> hey, wait a minute. You're making me miss people. See, that's why you need to wash dishes yesterday instead of your brother. It's in the dishwasher. Yeah, well, if you are consistent at washing dishes, you would know where the stuff is. Look in the dishwasher, and if it's not in the dishwasher, then it's on in the big drawer next to the stove. Can, can I be free to be now? You see what I'm saying? But see, you know, he he doesn't live here. He's just visiting for a week. He, he um, you know, got with me yesterday. Uh, well, for those who were on my live on Sunday, you know, I said he ended up, we're doing a face chat. I don't have an iPhone. I'm like the only person in the family who doesn't have an iPhone. I'm team Android. So if you're team Android, can you go into the chat and do a hashtag team Android? Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Hey, EJ, how are you doing? Hello, Dorsha and chat. Happy birthday, G mama. Hey, Callie Pooh Bear, how are you doing? Hey, Jeanette, how are you doing? So we're going to go into our 20 lessons. Ouch. Or amen. Oh, Team Android. Look at this. Look at these beautiful people. I mean, look at them. Oh, look at this. I knew I had some kindred folk. Look at this. Oh, oh my. <laughs> See this? See this? Now, if you got an iPhone, there's no hate. I'm just saying. Team Android people are usually very gregarious. They're very loving. They're very accepting. What I have experienced, and maybe I need to go to, to therapy, these iPhone people can be very snobby, very condescending. I'm just saying. Look, see? See what I'm saying? I'm just telling you. It's like a whole deal, right? And like I always tell people who have the iPhone, there's a reason why there's a bitten apple on that phone, okay? That was the apple from the garden. <laughs> I'm just joking. Someone take that and be running with it. <laughs> Anyway, our 20 lessons either will make you say amen. I got it. Yep, I know. Or ouch. Whew, that's something I need to improve on. Yeah, that right there. That hit. But hey, growth never happens in the comfort zone. Yeah. When you came into this world, you hurt your mama. And it was for your good. And you grew from it. But she still hurt. You know, <laughs> no pain, no gain. And I used to think that was a bunch of malarkey, but there was some truth to that. <laughs> There's either the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. You got to pick your pain, but you cannot go through life without pain. Pick your pain. Mmm, laughing out loud, the apple. <laughs> Thanks for hitting that like button. Yes, if you have not, please hit the thumbs up button as we get ready to go in to this 20 lessons amen or ouch number one praise people in public and correct them in private praise in public correct in private now this is if you care if you care about the relationship the reason why is when you're praising someone, you're extolling them, you're exhorting them, you are 
looking at their virtues, you're looking at their abilities, you're looking at what they did that was right. And that is wonderful. And that is to be celebrated. We would want God to do that to us. But now, when it comes time to correcting someone, if you care about them, if you don't care about them, then that's probably like the first problem. Because why are you sitting here dealing with someone or God has put someone in your path that you have such low regard for that you don't mind humiliating them, even though it is correction, because correction can be humiliating. I don't care how nice you put it, because at the end of the day, you're saying what you did was wrong. Now, you could say, well, I don't take it that way, but you're not everybody. And why couldn't it just be a private conversation that you have with them? Why do you have to have an audience in order to correct someone? Unless you're in a learning environment and that's what is expected. But if it is your spouse, if it is your child, if it's someone that you want to respect you, someone that you want to look at you in a certain regard, when Jesus had his disciples, he didn't correct them in front of the crowd. He waited till they were away from the crowd. And then was like, hey, the reason why this didn't work, because y'all haven't fasted and prayed. That's why that didn't happen. Y'all letting them demons beat up on y'all, making it seem like what y'all doing is my, you know what I mean? But he could have did it in front of the crowd. The other part that comes along with it, if he would have done it in front of the crowd, then they lose their credibility in front of the crowd because here is your person, your teacher, your master sitting there checking you in front of us. So why should we listen to you? That's almost like, you know, even if you have, you know, husband and wife and you want to sit there and check one another in front of your children. There are different levels of that. Because what you can do is be setting an example of how to sit there and check your spouse and then your child think that, okay, well, I can check, I can check you too. Even if we're in a church, you should not be taking someone on the pulpit and humiliating them. There is a place. In the Old Testament, it was God took Moses behind the mountain and then praise him in front of the mountain. If you care about the relationship, if you just want to be right about something, you can be right and lose a soul. You can be right and lose a relationship. Sometimes it's better to hold your tongue and let the Holy Spirit guide you in when is the appropriate time? Because just because you think something and you feel it don't mean that it's the right time. You, We have people who are living lives on just threads. There are people who got children right now in their household that are just one snap away from killing themselves. And somebody's saying, that yeah, be my child. And then they wake up and one day it is their child. Because, you know, the assumption is, well, you okay, and I didn't say nothing that bad. And I don't, no, no, no. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what spirits people are entertaining, what influence or stuff that they have. You never know. Just be sensitive. If you care about the relationship. I see, you know, people getting in calls in public with one another and stuff and blah, blah, blah. And even if a person doesn't clap back at you, doesn't mean that they're not going to clap back at you in their actions when you're no longer around. Because some people are like, well, forget you. You made me feel this way, so I'll get you back. Really, they're not really getting the, you back. But, you know, this type of thing can become can cancerous and it can metastasize. It can become like, it's just like, you know, if... You know why well, I have employees, right? I'm not going to sit there and correct my employee in front of the other employees. Well, you should have did this and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, we, um, we need to have a conversation. Because it's never my pleasure. And if it's something that I think is for benefit for the whole group, then I'm going to talk to the whole group. And I'm not going to single that one person out because, number one, I'm not their mother. 
And although I am the person who hired them and fired them, I want them to feel empowered that we are a team. I can't do all of this by myself. I value you. And when it's when you have done something wrong, I'm going to come to you and say, hey, this is how we do it. Da, 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 da. And if you ignore and you ignore whatever, then once again, like I said, I'm the person who hires and I'm the person who fires. You no longer fit in this organization. What y'all talking about? In, what what y'all talking about in the chat? Oh, some other people have joined. I don't want to be. Um... <laughs> G Mama said, "Amen and ouch." <laughs> Psalms one forty six. Amen, Larry. Oh, amen, Jeanette. Amen. Right. No when to speak about it or unless it's church discipline for someone who ignored the private collect correction. That is something totally different. I'm talking about your personal relationships with people that, like I said, if they mean something to you, your spouse, your child, your, 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 your colleague, and you have to be around them. And there's something that you could have just brought to them in private. You didn't have to sit there and do anything because what 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 benefit is it going to be? Now, if you're calling out somebody within an organization that is corrupt or they're doing something, whatever, and you're putting the, 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 the bolo out there, basically, stay away from this person. They are a predator. They are doing this. They are taking people's money. That is something totally different than someone that you love that was just out of pocket and you just had to. Be like, okay, I need you to come back to the light because you're in the dark right now. <laughs> hey, LP, how are you doing? You listening? Well, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Hey, Michelle, how are you doing? Welcome. Today is G Mama's birthday. If you want to throw a happy birthday in the chat, that would be awesome. <laughs> okay, so that was number one. And once again, I'm just saying, these are lessons that I learned that I'm sharing. They can make you say amen or ouch, or you can be like, I don't feel either one of them. So, I mean, that's okay. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's a grocery store. You don't have to buy all the food that's in there. Some food you like, some food you don't like. At some point or another, you'll get to the thing that you do like, right? And that's what my prayer is tonight. Number two assumptions are the lowest level of knowledge by which we can operate. And my pastor, Bishop Brown, awesome man of God, he says, he's been saying that for years, right? But when it hits home is when you have to self-correct. Self-correction is better than even having to go into number one, having someone privately correct you because you privately corrected yourself. And then you're able to say, hey, let me have a conversation with you. Um, I was in my feelings or I was wrong or I don't know what, it was my hormone, it was something going on, but I was out of pocket and I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I was wrong. You know what I mean? And let me tell you, I was, I was, I had thought this and I thought you meant this and I thought you was doing this and I blah, blah. See all the assumptions? And because you did this, and I thought that it meant that, and then I did this, you know what I mean? Assumptions. Assumptions can cause us a world of problems. Well, I assume that you didn't that 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 you didn't want to be with me anymore because you weren't doing A, B, or C or D. And you were acting this way. So then I stepped out and I started talking to Shorty because she all up in my face. And, you know, and I'm like, shoot, what do you care? You don't want to be this is, a, this, you know, this is somebody at a, a, a counseling and a therapist session and be like, no, I was feeling like I was ugly and that you weren't attracted to me because I had gained this weight because I've had this done or that done or I was dealing with this sickness and I wasn't feeling myself, whatever. And then you didn't seem like, you know what I mean? But all of that, it just be based off of assumption. And they done created two worlds that two people can live in based off of assum assuming. Someone can say, well, I was on my job. And a new person came in and they gave them 
this money and they didn't give it to me and they gave it to them because they're Asian and I'm black. Is that what it was? Or maybe they gave it to them because you didn't have access to their resume to know that they had 15 years of experience with a master's degree and, you know, and they interviewed well and they asked them a question about the direction of what, uh, of where the company or organization needs to go. And they gave them a real life problem that y'all are dealing with and they triaged it on the spot and they were like, we need you because we all have been dealing with this problem for a long time. And that one person on the team came up with that answer and we like that answer. And I'm not saying that, you know, there aren't different, you know, oppressive things that go on and different systems. I don't want you to miss the message, <laughs> but you can get a whole attitude with where you work living and working off an assumption that the reason why this happened because of, or the reason why she got that job is because she cute or she got a big butt. And the reason why this happened is because of this, because this person, because she'd be over there flirting with him and he over there looking at her and da, 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 da. Or the reason why the, if you are not happy with where you are, there's a thing. It's called change. Change. If you don't like your job, Find you another one. If you are not happy in your relationships, your friendships, find you some new friends. And if you're in a marriage and you're not happy, you need to work on happiness within because happiness is, is, a, is a self job. God did not create anybody to make you happy. Let me find that in the Bible real quick. can't find it <laughs> it's no one's job but we can assume we can make assumptions about this assumptions about that but assumptions are lazy that's why it's the lowest level of knowledge by which we can operate because instead of making assumptions make time for a conversation isn't that easier and some people are like, no, because I already know how the conversation is going to go. Well, see, once again, an assumption. And then even if it do go that way, it's still better to have the conversation than to dodge it and sit there living in your own campground where you're at war with other people. And you're sitting there talking to other people who don't even know the whole situation, giving them a piece of it, that a piece of it. Da, 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 da. And now here you are and created this whole um, prison for yourself. Not necessary. Don't assume. No. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. The truth is the Holy Spirit. He is an ally. He is right there. Holy Spirit, what am I supposed to see? What am I supposed to hear? What am I supposed to understand? And if I am to say anything, what am I supposed to say? You'll be amazed. The Holy Spirit come back to you and be like, what you need to do is take a pause. You're looking too deep into this. Give me some room so I can do my work. And I need you to close your mouth and focus on something else and let me do what I'm going to do. Hey, then that right there. And save yourself from some arguments. Save yourself from having to sit up here and be in somebody else's head and thinking what they're thinking. Or why are you sitting there having conversations, thinking about how how something, something or someone, some organization did you wrong? That could have been an opportunity for you to minister to someone. And ministry don't just happen in the church. We go to churches and places of worship so that we're empowered so we can help others. I'm just saying. What are y'all talking about? Hey, sons, one for you. Say, amen. Self correction. Self correction. Self correction. Number three, <clears throat> forgiveness is a gift that you give yourself. The Holy Spirit gave this to me while I was um, work, while I was writing this down, and it like, like, like dropped. It's like a heart of stone only seals your grave. 
a heart of stone only seals your grave. That's your epitaph. That's what's on top of your grave, your heart of stone. Forgiveness is a gift you give yourself. When you have resentment and unforgiveness, you create a prison for yourself. And it's like, and only you have the key to let yourself out. And it's this word called forgiveness. And I know you're like, oh, but you've never been in a situation where you had to forgive somebody, blah, blah, blah. Honey, I've been in situations where I had to forgive people that weren't sorry and would never say they were sorry. And I was never going to give an apology, but I forgave them anyway. So what does forgiveness mean? Does forgiveness mean that I'm giving you a pass? Does, am I validating that what you did, that was okay to do? God didn't tell us to be the judge of whether it was the right thing to do. I mean, you can use some of your common sense to know like, okay, well, that wasn't cool, cool to do, but the person did it anyway. What happens is, it's not that part of the equation, it's how you respond to things when it happens to you. How is your heart built? Now, I'm going to give y'all an example. Hey, Vesha. Hey, Lydia. You better return my phone call, girl. Peekaboo. <laughs> Everyone say hello to Vesha. Give you a prime example of forgiveness. My mother. At five months old, she used me as a bartering chip with my dad. She said, either you marry me or you take your child. Well, he was 23 and she was 17. Um, she was a divorcee. Yeah, I know you were like, oh, got some R. Kelly going on. No, he Roger Jewel, no R. Kelly. She was divorced. Um, high school, well, I can't even say high school dropout. Middle school dropout. She was married at 15, then divorced. Um, you know, she was hanging around GI club, well, with the base, whatever. He thought that she was older because she was smoking, drinking, hanging out, had a child, was divorced, whatever. Long story, not so long. So, gave him an ultimatum. And then, um, basically, you know, put, you know, took the stroke, I mean, took the, the car seat thing and just put me on the back seat or on the, on the um, sidewalk or something like to that match. The bottom line was the woman wasn't trying to raise me, even though she gave birth to me. She sat there and had unprotected sex. She already had one child, but she had that child. But she didn't want me. Now, how do you reconcile that as a child? Well, there's a lot of things that go on in your head. So I'm going to share, you know, a little bit, but I'm not going to belabor the point. The first form of, well, the first emotion or the first, um, the first thing that I felt coming from my mom once I'm able to have feelings is rejection. And rejection hurts, especially when it's rejection from someone who is supposed to love you. Now, there are people who have been rejected by their fathers. That is more of a common place, especially in our society and, and especially within my subset of people. Hello. But imagine being a child going to school and people ask you, where's your mom? And you'll be like, I don't know. She gave me up. Do you, do you, can you even imagine the comments that are made to you? Well, I'll give you an example. Whose mother doesn't want them? There must be something wrong with you. Everybody's mother want them. I had no point of reference. I don't know what a mother is. I don't know what that feel like, whatever. So you know what? At some point or another, I started lying. I gave my life to Christ at 10. And then I started lying, telling people that my mother was dead. 
because I went to a different elementary every year. We moved a lot and it had nothing to do with military. We were right down here in Georgia. I went to like five different elementaries here and then I went to another one and um, I went to four here, one in Alaska, another one in Michigan. And then finally, my father said no more movement. So I went to middle school, high school at the same place. But every year I have to retell the story of my mother's rejection to a new group of children. And let me tell you something. Children can be the cruelest. Do you hear me? Yes, they can be cruel. And it wasn't like I had a sibling or someone to fend for me, protect me. And I'm the daughter of a single man. And, you know, he's out working. He's doing his thing, whatever. And men are created different from women. Now, a father can be different with a daughter when he has the mother there and the mother can help God. Like, baby, don't talk to her like, honey, she's going to let me handle that, blah, blah, blah. My father was a strong hand disciplinary and there was no like, oh, coddle, coddle, ooh, baby, baby, baby. So it wasn't like that. So yeah, there were tears and there was the feeling of rejection and then me not really knowing, like, I mean, since we're talking about it, I didn't know what the lady looked like until I met her when I was 17. Did not know what she looked like. I would cut pictures out of magazines and be like, show, show the kids, oh, this is my mom. <laughs> I stopped lying when I was 13 when I received the gift or was unveiled the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? I was 13 years old. I prayed for the Holy Spirit to be revealed in my life. And, you know, and, and he, and, I mean, he was there, you know, and conviction came. Conviction leads to correction. Someone saying, oh, you're trying to make me feel guilty. Da, da, da. Usually when, if a person's trying to make you feel guilty, they're trying to manipulate you. Guilt comes from Satan. They're trying to manipulate you to do something that they want you to do. When conviction comes, which comes from the Holy Spirit, conviction leads to correction. So the Holy Spirit said to me, you don't have a mother. And it's okay. This is the way that God planned it. This is your story. Don't be ashamed of your story. You have a father that loves you and sacrificed enough and he didn't abandon you. That is your story. You have a black male father who chose to raise his daughter. That is your story. Stick to your story. Stop making up all this other stuff. And I received it. And although it hurt with the tears and everything, like even now, as an adult, sometimes when the Holy Spirit, you know, convicts me, which leads to correction, it's like, I'm a grown woman. You got me up here, right? <laughs> okay, I accept it because I have learned it's better to accept the correction of the Holy Spirit than to just go wild nilly. I'm going to figure it out my way because I've been burnt too many times trying to figure it out my way when all the time Jesus left me a comforter. He left me a teacher, a guide. Why would I forsake that? And if you ever heard the Holy Spirit voice, that's a voice you never want to lose. I promise you. And if you haven't, I hope one day, and you just ask, ask. But the first prerequisite is make sure you accept that Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And with that comes the gift of the Holy Spirit. So this woman, I end up meeting her. And that was awkward, right? She's looking at me and I'm looking at her. I didn't see any, any resemblance, nothing. And it was just like, wow. Okay, that's who I come from. Well, when I met her, guess what? I prayed the prayer of salvation with her. I actually ministered the gospel of Jesus Christ to her. She told me the reasons why she felt like that she couldn't receive it and that she wasn't worthy. And, you know, I'm 17. You know, I, I was a, um, a, a youth leader. I was an altar worker. When adults, when adults, not just children, adults go down there and they give their lives to Christ, I would be assigned like 10 people a week. 
to just check on them, pray with them, whatever. So yeah, I'm 17 years old, listening to real world adult problems and letting the Holy Spirit use me and praying with people, right? So it was like being Joseph, the one that was sent away. Now I come and I'm able to minister salvation to her, my half sister and my grandmother, her mother. But I had long decided to forgive her. And does forgiveness mean that it was okay what she did? Well, as time has gone on, the Holy Spirit, because I chose to forgive her, the Holy Spirit was able to drop things in my spirit and to use people to broaden my horizons on why it was necessary for her not to be in my life. And at that moment, that's when I was like, oh, Jesus, you knew what you was doing. You knew what you was doing. This door shit that you see right now, I promise you, she wouldn't exist if I was raised by her. She was just meant to be the vessel to get me here. And built into that blessing was a blessing for my father because he says that, if I did not come into his life when I did, he probably would have ended up dead. So it was blessings on top of blessings on top of blessings. And God will use whatever vessel that he wants to. And sometimes the vessels that are used will draw us closer to him. I didn't have no dependency on her. Oh, no one like my mama. No one gonna love me like my mama. No, no one gonna love me like Jesus, honey. I met him for myself at 10 years old, all alone in a church by myself while my dad was at home. So because I did not have her and my father was doing the best that he could, but I had a void, Jesus was able to meet me where I was at a young age and then and it doesn't mean that I was perfect, like, oh, Dorsha was the chosen one. No, honey, there was plenty of Anakin in me, y'all. That's what the Star Wars fan. <laughs> there was some Vader too, honey. I'm keeping it real, okay? <laughs> I was not the chosen one. But I was, God hand select, he hand selects his own. Many are called, but the chosen are few. Now, that's the word. Whatever it is that I went to, through to and through, it got me to where I am. And God doesn't waste pain. So what I realized and what came to me because I forgave a person who wasn't sorry and who would never apologize, what I end up receiving is, number one, she was mentally ill. She shouldn't have been having no one's baby. But God said, well... You can have two. She ended up giving my sister to her father's people. And then I was raised by mine. The other thing is, is that I needed, I didn't need a poor example of a mother. Because sometimes people become that thing that they don't like. Like somebody be talking about, well, my mama did this. My mama did this. I never do that. Blah, blah, blah. So either they're going to come to one extreme or the other and they end up becoming exactly what that was. And I'm thankful that she was not there because I didn't need to learn all of that to have to unlearn it. So then the Holy Spirit can download in me the mother that I need to be for my children. Right. There, there was no example. So where I got the example of motherhood from. Now, my father taught me various principles and he taught me how to cook and clean. No, the Holy Spirit didn't teach me all of that. Da, 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 da. But he taught me about being able to raise these two young men and to know that don't put a template and say, well, because I did this one with this one, I want to do this one with them. They are two separate human beings, two different purposes and personalities, temperaments, everything. So I had to trust and depend on God to download me the instructions for this one and this one. Because remember, I'm just a steward. The children belong to God. He also sent a friend to me. When I was in my early 30s, I moved to Mississippi. 
didn't move necessarily become close to my mom, but I was, you know, on friendly terms with her and I was extending an olive branch. You know what I mean? Even though it did get all roughed up and everything because of her mental capacities and stuff. And she threatened to hurt, you know, my young, my oldest child who was a, a toddler. I mean, but she just wasn't there. So I'm like, okay, you know, I forgave. Now, forgiveness don't mean that you got to put a lock on yourself and be like, let me just go around with this person, whatever. No, it's forgiveness is I am not going to give you the penalty for the crime. It's like amnesty. You know about amnesty? Have you ever had like, oh, well, they're going to forgive whatever uh, for like speeding tickets or something. Or people want that amnesty for student loan debt. <laughs> Be like, forgive it. You will not have to pay what you are supposed to pay. It's like what Christ did for us. He paid the penalty for our sin. He paying for what we do and are doing. Forgiveness is when you don't repay. You don't hold them accountable. You don't like, you don't have to, I'm not going to put a sentence on you. And now this is the verdict. And then this is your sentence. No, I forgive you. I release you because now God has to deal with them. And now I don't carry that sin because you have to love others the way you want God to love you. And you got to forgive others the way that you want God to forgive you. Now, some people are like, well, there are some worse of things that I just can't do and I just can't do it and I just can't do it, blah, 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 blah. You can do whatever you want to do. There's a difference between you can't do it and you don't want to do it. And it's OK. Maybe you're not there yet, but you really need to consider it because it's for your growth and for your good. And there was supposed to be a testimony there. God entrusted you with a testimony. Whatever that thing is that you think that you can't forgive, once you conquer it, then God can use you. He can use you because you're not the only person. You're not an anomaly. You are not alone. There's probably somebody else that got a worse story. But somebody is looking at you and they are depending on you for your testimony. They want to see you overcome because if they can see that you overcame, then that's giving them hope. That's giving them their why. That's giving them some drive. That's giving them fire. It's like, if that strong woman can make it through, if that strong man, and I know he's a man's man, and if he said that he can forgive, if she can forgive, then I know that I can. That's why we share our testimony. Faith comes by hearing. I got to give you some hope. Got to let you know there's another side to this. Now, she died. When Hurricane Katrina happened in 2004, I was able to be a refuge for her and her family. Everyone left Mississippi except for her because she said she would rather die than to come and stay with me. And the invitation was extended. So FEMA had to come and rescue her out of the house. There you go. So then, you know what? I could wipe the dust off of my feet. Because the Bible says when you bring your peace somewhere and it's not accepted, just wipe the dust off your feet and just keep on going. I'm not going to keep sitting here and like, oh, please. No, I've forgiven you. I ain't holding nothing against you. If you need a shelter, I'll be your shelter. You chose not to. Okay, well, what else can I do? I can't do anything else. When I found out that she died, because they contacted me, my half-sister contacted me. And she said, and I wanted to let you know that she died. I was like, I'm sorry for your loss. That's all I could really say because I didn't have emotions tied to her. And I know that I was her child. But she may have a different view because she was raised down there. She interfaced with her, whatever. And then some people say, well, you didn't really forgive her because you were supposed to be like, you will go to her funeral spot. According to who? I'm led by the Holy Spirit. And you can't be somebody else's Holy Spirit, right? And when the Holy Spirit corrects me, I move in correction. And when he tells me to stay still, I move in, I stay still. 
but I'm going to operate in truth. Doesn't mean I'm always going to get it right. No, but when I, but when it is wrong, I will get it right because I rather please God than to please man. You know what I mean? So, but did I cry about her dying? Not necessarily. I cried because I felt sorry for her. I felt sorry that she was never able to feel what I feel for my children. I cried because there is a good chance that, you know, we will not see each other face to face again. I cried because she spent her days on this earth tortured, talking to people who weren't there. I cried for her. I had sympathy for her, compassion for her. And it made me be like, so now when I see other people in some similar situations, I'm like, have you ever considered that person may be mentally ill? Like, it is a real thing. And I know some people like that person knew what they were doing and blah, blah. That's just your bitterness talking. You ain't no PhD. You ain't no, no, no trained specialist. And yeah, you may have a gut feeling, whatever, but mental health is real and mental illness is real. There are a lot of people walking around with undiagnosed mental health issues. It's just that hers was, you know what I mean? And sometimes your blessing is the person that God shielded you from, the person that God took out of your life. And you're sitting there making an assumption that your life would have been better if that person would have been in your life. You're not God. You have to trust his, his plan and purpose for your life. That if he said, your daddy, your mama was not necessary, that you were better off, trust him. I'm trying to tell you something. Amen. Or ouch. What are y'all talking about in the chat? Let me see what y'all talking about. Yes. Hey, Rain and Glory. What's going on? Do you know today is G Mama's birthday? If not, give G Mama a happy birthday. Start anew when you know your happiness is overdue. Hey, that part. I don't know what that part. Peekaboo. Hey, Black Tropical Homestead. How are you doing, Soil Sister? I always assume it's the Soil Sister. Could be the Soil Brother. But if it's the Soil Brother and the Soil Sister looking, what's up, Bobby? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Trust the process. Yes. When you can't see God's hand in your life, trust his heart. Trust his heart towards you. He loved you before you knew what love was. So number one, praise in public, correct in private. Number two, assumptions are the lowest level of knowledge by which we can operate. Number three, forgiveness is a gift you give to yourself. You release yourself, honey. Because you ain't doing nothing to them. You being resentful does nothing to them. You ain't hurt nobody but yourself. And like I said, the Holy Spirit told me it is the stone you put on your own grave. Forgiveness. That's what your epitaph. That's the stone on your grave. Number four, don't Fear failure, fear not trying. We have so much potential inside of us. We are created in the image and the likeness of God. Man did not know that there was nothing, something that he couldn't do until he failed. Till sin came in. But now that we have a way of reconnection to God, the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Can you start that business? Yes, you can start that business. What if it fails? What if it succeeds? What if it fails and then it fails again? Okay. What if it fell 47 times and then at the 48th time, then Disney World happens? What if? What if you didn't do anything and then you were just mediocre when God created you for greatness? What if? 
What if you trying help somebody else try that will actually make it and then they remember you and then they bless you because all they needed was the push, but they didn't see anybody else doing it. But then they saw you and then you inspired them. There are all kind of blessings that are in all of the lessons and we never get them if we never try. Just do it. I ain't going to say just try. Just do it. In the words of Master Yoda, there's do and do not. There is no try. Just do it. Do it. So I did a blog when I was recently divorced. I would get like $5 check. I think the most I ever got was $30. And it was blog spot. And it was Google AdSense. I wish I would have probably kept up with it. Probably would have really been. But you know, they give you like a little five cent, one cent, three cent, whatever for these little ads that would come on my blog, whatever, right? And a lot of like stuff, like I write like on LinkedIn and stuff. I was doing whatever. And I was like, I, I don't really have a following or anything, but I just went ahead and did it, right? Not knowing that I was cultivating something that I would later use. So here go. Here I am on LinkedIn now, 10,000 plus followers later, basically doing the same thing, right? Did the other one work? I didn't know necessarily, you know, what level of success it would be, but it did create a work in me that prepared me for something else where God is using me. And I get the emails. They're in my inbox. And then a lot of people, they just comment publicly. I mean, you know, it doesn't matter. It's just to know that your footsteps are ordered, right? Don't fear failure. Failure is an event and never a failure and never a person. But we truly never fail at anything if we learn. Truly, you just never really... You learn. If you walked away with something that you didn't know, then guess what? That wasn't a failure. That was a lesson wrapped in disguise. Get out of your own head. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and a sound mind. Let's start right there. Sound mind. Because there will be voices. And it'll be your voice, it'll be the enemy's voice, and be a Holy Spirit. Whose report are you going to believe? Whose voice are you going to believe? Because you'll talk yourself out, and the enemy is there. He already sees your greatness. The, the enemy already sees your potential. He sees it. Now, God can send someone into your life who is prophetic, Right? I was ordained into ministry in 2000 with a prophetic anointing. I mean, it's one of the gifts of the fivefold ministry, right? Prophets are able to see things that a lot of people don't see, and they're able to sense things, and then they can edify and they can correct. Da, 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 da. I just don't go around wearing the title because then people start treating you a little different and funny and stuff. You know what I mean? Because you see things and you sense things and this, that, the other. But it's also for, it's for the body, but then also for individuals. And then God has given me favor to be able to, to um, talk to people in positions and of power and stuff. God always makes sure that he has a representative somewhere in the building. <laughs> and I'm like, Lord, if you're going to use somebody, use me. Sure, you'll go through your whole life letting everybody else use you. Better let God use you, I promise you. Hey, how you doing? Oh, hey, friend. <laughs> I love friends. In my ouch, yes, and amen, sister. Go ahead, friend. Everyone say hello to friend. She's from LinkedIn. Larry Tuck is from LinkedIn. Les Leslie Corngay is from LinkedIn. Hey, Grace, how are you doing? My mother's mom's name was Grace, or is Grace. Peekaboo. Everyone was, um, um, you know, wishing G-Mama happy birthday. This is her birthday. So 
Don't fear failure, fear not trying. Because even if you feel like you fail in that which you think is a failure, is actually a blessing and a lesson in disguise. Number five, don't allow others to create your world. They will make it too small. I remember when um, I got divorced and I wanted to go to school to get my um, MBA. But, you know, you know, recently divorced, single mom, two boys, not really into, and I was at home with them, right? For a time period. So not used to having my children in some daycare and stuff. They, they never experienced that in their life. Um, so it's like, how can I still be there with them? But I want to go to school and get my MBA because I'm going back into the workforce. And when I come back, I want to come back with a bang. I want to, you know, I don't want to come back making what I made when I left the workforce. So I was like, I want to get an MBA. And there were people around me at that time. They were like, why would you go and get an MBA when you basically already know whatever they're going to teach you? Right. I was like, because I feel like there are things that I can learn that will empower me. And I, I it's like a lot of things I, I learn. It's like I'm learning it because. God has given me a gift of being a quick study. I can just, you know, I can go into like an organization. I can look at the bottleneck, the weaknesses, the strength. I can do a SWOT analysis like real quick. Even before I knew what a SWOT analysis was, I can do it. I can just walk into the, If I see something that's in disarray, I have a natural gift of organization. Like that's my spiritual gift, right? I can just organize. Um, but... They were like, you, you don't need to get no MBA. I was like, I think that it will be beneficial for me going into the workplace. And then also when I when I I was also doing my business and I was saying I want to be able to give my my clients also any knowledge that I'm able to get from there. Well, I am so thankful that I did because there was a lot of stuff, of course, that I did not know. And so I did it online. Then because I chose to do it online, people were like, well, you went to the University of Virginia. It's one of the top schools in the nation. And at the time, it was in the top 25. Why would you go to a University of Phoenix? I said, because it fits my lifestyle and where I am now. But you got in UVA. I said, well, what's the problem, though? Is it the problem because it's online and you feel like I'm not going to learn? Or is it a problem because you already have a preconceived notion of what online learning is? And of course, you know, it was more so the latter. But I'm glad that I went. My human resources um, management class, I got 100. The, the guy, he was actually chief human resource officer for a Fortune 1000. And he said, you should go into human resource management. Like you would be a dynamite when it comes to organization and, and employment, de employee development, all of this, that, the other, blah, blah, blah. I said, I don't know anything about that, but who's a chief of staff? <laughs> so you just never know. But if I just listened to what people told me, then I probably would have talked myself out of it. And then, of course, I did finance and this, that, the other. And, and here I am having to look at a billion dollar budget in one part of my life and then a million dollar budget in another part of my life. Don't let people construct your world because they'll make it too small. I remember... You know, when I was thinking about the children going to school and I said, I want to homeschool. And someone said to me, you should go back into the workforce. Why would you waste all of that talent and knowledge that you have to be an at-home mom homeschooling your children? And, you know, sometimes, and this is why I'm thankful that I received the Holy Spirit, you know, younger. Not saying that I always abide by them because, honey, there was the fire of 20s. And if it came here, it came out here. And I was very much choleric. So, oh, you want to play with knives? Okay, well, let me take out my sword. Woo! In the fight. No. I was like, you know, we have different value systems. You think that investing in my children is a waste of my talent in my time. 
Whereas I feel like it is the best investment of my talent and my time to sow that talent and time in my home first and then to the rest of the world. And guess what? That was the end of that conversation. There's a lot of things I could have said, but the Holy Spirit gave me the words to say because I didn't want to disrespect the person because they were actually old enough to be my mother. You know what I mean? But it just is what it is. And I did it. And it was a wonderful experience. I actually created my own curriculum for my children. And, you know, and then by the time they went into school, I mean, you know, my children have been scholars their whole entire academic careers. So, but not saying that they wouldn't necessarily have been, but it was just a desire that was in my heart and God made a way for it to happen. And it happened. You know what I mean? And it was for the benefit of my children. And if you sent your children to daycare, or if they went to whatever, that's not the point of what I'm sharing. It's about people trying to talk me out of doing something that was in my heart to do. And if I would have listened to them, them shaping my world, they would just put me in the same box that they put themselves. Um, number six, money and time or seeds. Invest them wisely. Now, some people are really good on their money game when it comes to all of that, but they may not be as good on their time game. And when I say time, I'm not just talking about your daily routine. I'm talking about your relationships. The daily routine that's also important because if you say like, well, I want to be an entrepreneur, but you sitting there binge watching on Netflix, that ain't very entrepreneurial. Unless you're a screenplay writer and you're sitting there getting nuggets because it's inspiring you to do whatever, whatever. But if you want to work for yourself, you don't have the same, you know, um, leisure time as a person who doesn't. But, you know, it's an opportunity cost. Everyone learned that in economics. It's one of them things that I learned when I went and got that MBA. <laughs> Whatever time that you're spending doing this, you're giving up the equal time of what it would be doing this. And you're going to have to make that determination, which one of them have the most value. It's just like in relationships. Do you know that there are some friendships in your life that have an expiration date? And I know some people are like, no, my friends are forever. And da, 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 da. then maybe this is not for you. But there are a lot of people that you have outgrown your friends and you need some new ones. You need someone, some people around you who fit where you are now and where God is about to take you. They still talking about the same thing, doing the same thing, talking about the same people, talking about way back when, da, 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 and God's trying to move you here and you still holding on to these people. But wouldn't that make me a bad person? I don't need, we don't supposed to be judging nobody. It ain't about judging no one. There's a road and there's different people you're going to meet on this road that you're traveling. And some people can derail you from your path of destiny because they weren't meant to be there. And guess what? God is not going to promote somebody to your next level who's not supposed to be there. So you know what? Because you are a person, an agent of free will, he'll just leave you where you are. And then you'll be like, why am I still in third grade? Lord, I'm, I'm ready to be in fourth grade. I told you she ain't your friend. Now, I done sent somebody to you to tell you she ain't your friend. Now, I let y'all get into this, this argument and uh, 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 and you don't have no peace. And you're thinking because you're so broken hearted because this is your friend. When really I'm trying to tell you, wake up. That was for a season. That was for a reason. But this is not your lifetime friend. I'm just saying. Money and time are seeds. Watch what you're sowing them into and who you're sowing them into. Debbie Downers and Dexter Doubters. <laughs> yes, reason, season, and lifetime. Absolute truth, Michelle. Yes, see, reason, season, and lifetime. Wow, this is an incredible topic. Nugget, nugget, nugget. 
Sometimes it hurts to believe that, Dorsham. Let me tell you something. I have had friendships that my father has with a clear head, a clear heart, just flat out told me, that person is not your friend. I'm like, what, what, what is he talking about? She is a nice person. She is beautiful. She says that I'm like a sister to her. We got kindred spirits. We got things that we have in common. What do you mean? She's not my friend. I haven't done anything to her. He said, you run across a lot of women who like the image of who you are. So then they adapt so that they can play this game. I want Dorsha in my life. So now, whoo, let me quote a little scripture. Oh, yeah, I like doing that. Nah, 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 nah. He said, but really, they're envious of you. They want your life. And so they're there looking, but at the same time, they're like, she ain't all of that. Yeah, I'm glad that happened to her. Yeah, bring her off of her high horse. And so he told me on a couple occasions that some females, because, you know, one of them, I came to him. I was like, well, why would she say that about me? You know, she said this comment and da, 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 and made a reference to, oh, you know, well, you know, these men, they just like, you know, with the big butt and whatever. And I was like, you talking about my butt? Like, what? Da, da, da. He was like, she has low self-esteem when it comes to her body. So now she's over here. That was like, you know, a passive aggressive way of saying the reason why guys like you is because of how your body looks. When really she's insecure about hers. But your friend wouldn't say that. That's not a friend. But he would say, you know, I'm not saying that you need to throw away the whole tree because it has a rotten apple. There still could be ministry there. And that was another lesson I ended up learning. There, have been, there are people that come into your life that can be friends. But there's a whole lot more that come in your life that are ministry. And it doesn't matter if y'all got kindred spirits and this, that, the other. Friends are able to pour back into you. Ministry just takes. And you know we went through that one before. Better watch and pray. What you talking about, friend? New level comes new devil. Now, ain't that the truth? Now, you done said something there, sis. Mm. I know about some new level. Sometimes it could take 10 years or more. Ask me how I know. Yes. And it's not going to stop it from hurting. And it, this is not just something that happens to females, right? Sometimes because we are discerning and more emotionally wired and because we are we and empathetically wired, we can have a discerning this thing, but sometimes we can miss it. It was like, I felt like the envy, but I just didn't know why. He just didn't sugarcoat it because I, I was raised by a dude. So he ain't going to sugarcoat it. He's like, she ain't your friend. But I'm just like, but why? It's like, well, everyone ain't going to be your friend. She ain't your friend. She just likes, she likes the image of you. She likes your lifestyle. She likes, you know, the people you have access to. She want to be you. And if somebody want to be you, they can't be your friend. <laughs> they can't be your friend. Because at one point or another, they're going to hate. They're going to hate when, when you get blessed. It, it's going to rub them a certain way when the blessings after blessings and the blessings, whatever. And then when, when the hard times come and the storms come, you would be like, okay, where are you? And all they can say, mm, girl, it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. But then they're going to go back to whoever their other friends are and tell them a whole story. See, this is, see, that's what, uh-huh. And I, I knew they wasn't perfect. I knew all of that and all that, you know, talking about God, whatever. You should use that on your own marriage. That's why you divorced. And then you go on with your life, go through the pain of your divorce. And then God sends you love on a two-way street at the Beamer shop. Ikorobodash. <laughs> Y'all know I'm talking about my husband. And then next thing you know, the same people that were sitting there judging you, they end up divorced. They end up in a situation. But 
ain't like because you want it to happen. It's just that there is a law that God has set into place. It's called reciprocity. Whatsoever a man sows, not one time, you continually sow, that will you reap. You're going to reap what you sow. You can sow good seeds. And guess what? If you continuously sow good seeds, you're going to reap the harvest of good seeds. And if you continuously sow bad seeds, you're going to reap the harvest. And let me tell you something. Later is greater. You be like, let me sow these seeds right now and get this over with because you don't want to be reaping the bad seeds that you sowed in your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. Let's move on to the other one. Number seven. And this is for parents. And it can also be for those who are maternal, paternal figures in some young person's life. Your voice will become your child's inner voice. Hmm. So how does that happen? Words are spirit and they are life. And it's a transfer. So imagine this. You ain't nothing. You ain't never going to be nothing. You just like your father. And you just keep saying it and keep saying it. Now, here they are, 20, 30, 40. They want to go right, but they're feeling the force. It could be spiritual DNA because there are, you know, chromosomes that we get from our parents biologically and then there's spiritual DNA that we get and there's some generational curses that we get that we get but we ain't got to die with okay they want to go right they want to go left but then they hear this voice who are you fooling you ain't nothing special shoot you just like your old man so let me just go ahead and do what feels natural Shoot, this is just how I am. Well, you could do this and you could be but nah, uh-uh. This is just this is this is just who I am. This is just this is just this is just how I am. Well, you 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 just like your mother. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, you you just went and told somebody about how crazy she is, and then you you then they over here telling you, well, you just like her, and you're like, no, it's that talking about my mama. Oh, when you was talking about them at first, talking about how crazy they are, now you are acting crazy. The goal is not to get so easily offended that you can't hear a voice when it's reaching out to you to wake you up, awaken you. Don't say words to your children that you wouldn't want someone saying to you. Now, those in my inner circle, you know how I am about cursing and this, that, the other. And it's not so much like, oh, cussing is like bad and you shouldn't do it. I don't want to do it. And I want to be the same person regardless of what environment I'm in. So the Dorsha that you're getting today is the same Dorsha that my father gets. And I wouldn't curse in front of him. And I wouldn't curse in front of my boss and I wouldn't curse in front of my pastor and I don't curse in front of my children. I don't curse at my children. So I just want to be the same person. Now, there is no judgment to anyone else, but it's just that if I'm going to spend any significant time with you, you become who you associate with. So if I know that there's a guardrail that I'm protecting myself with because now I have to put on the different faces uh, well, now I'm with you. Now I'm going to talk this way. And then when I'm around the church, folk, I'm going to talk this way. And now da, 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 and you can say that's being diversified. But no, that's like being schizophrenic for me. It may be something different for you. So as a rule of thumb, no, I never cursed at my children because I wouldn't want somebody cursing at me. Because if you curse at me, I'm going to curse you back. And I'm trying to show my children an example. If I tell my children not to smoke, then guess what? I'm not going to be a hypocrite. Children hate hypocrisy. I promise you, they hate hypocrisy. 
telling them one thing and you doing another. Don't you cuss. Oh, you be cussing in front of me. Well, you cussing at me. Live the example. Be the sermon. Do it. There are some things that are mandated by law, okay? You drink at this age, blah, 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 so and so and so and so. Cussing is not one of them. We can go on to another one. That's just one of my ones because I know that when I did cuss, honey, I could cuss somebody out. I can invent compound cuss words. Like I can create, like you going to feel that. And I don't want that coming out of my mouth. I don't want that coming out of my mouth to a man or a female because when when I do not tame my tongue and let the Holy Spirit bridle my tongue, I will make you want to fight. But I'm a fighter. So if you can't beat me at my words, then you're going to want to fight me. And now I ain't fight nobody. I got a gun. <laughs> I'll be like, so I ain't put my hands on you. We ain't got time for that. But the Bible says this thing right here, this mouth, it is vile. It is filthy. It's not what goes into a man that defiles you. There are people who say they don't eat pork. There's a whole section right there in the New Testament about that. You don't eat pork. You don't touch this. You don't touch that. Fine. But it's not that that's defiling you, your soul. It's what's coming out of your mouth. Because the Bible says out of your heart, the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. So you watch what you say to your children because at some point or another, what you have done is you sold seeds, birds of seed. If you tell them, you know what? You're just having a challenge right now. But guess what? I know, I know who you are. You are a leader and not a follower. You, you ain't built for that. You just tell them remind them of their greatness. You tell them the opposite of their behavior. You're not a liar. So stop hanging around people who influence you to lie. You're not that. You are raised better than that. God created you higher than that, better than that, greater than that. Now go somewhere and think about that. And you're a loser. You're this, that, the other. I had a guy tell me, one time when I was talking to him, he was actually a relative and like, I don't want to be putting, you know, nobody business out there. This is so good. Got to catch the rest of the replay. Going to run some quick. You go ahead, Psalms 146. We enjoyed you. Thank you for coming out. Ah, uh, what you talking about, Cali Pooh Bear? Yep, they talked about Earl and I saying we were stupid. We wouldn't make it past a year. Now, most of them are divorced with baby daddies. <laughs> And we have 27 years in. Go ahead, Pooh Bear. <laughs> um, he was having um, some challenges, right? He kept making the same mistakes and this, that, the other. And he was coming in hard on himself. And he said, well, my mother said that I'm just like my father. So, you know, I'm thinking that I'm just doomed to repeat this behavior. Because that's what she's told me my whole life. And at that moment, I'm like, Wow. His mother's words literally planted a seed to unearth hope in him. Hope that I can be better. Hope that I can break the generational curse. Hope that I can get out of this cycle. Because she kept sowing seeds in him. Because she was a bitter, scorned woman. You're just like your father. You're just like your father. I'm just saying. Hey, extraordinaire. How are you doing? <clears throat> your voice becomes your child's inner voice. Number eight, you can be inspired by someone, but don't copy them. You want to know why? Because you can never graduate being somebody else. You can never graduate being somebody else. Now, there's nothing wrong with having people in your life that inspire you. This person inspired me to step up my clothing game or, or step up my investment game or step up my, my spiritual game or, or step up my YouTube game or step up my gardening. They inspire me. But when you start trying to duplicate what they do, 
there is a certain thing called favor of God. And just because you see the favor of God in their life, you cannot duplicate it, honey. You heard that what God has for me is for me. Now, that's not to say that you can't have your own greatness, but God created you and has a special relationship just with you. And he will give you a dose of favor and it could exceed the other person. But don't just go around duplicating everyone else and lose who you were created to be. Some people nowadays, they do it for attention. They see that someone got a buzz or some whatever. Oh, let me try to do what they're doing. Yeah, it may or may not work for you. And then when it does, doesn't work for you, then what? Now you're going to come up with, well, why is it working for them? Well, let me try this. No. Have a simple conversation with your creator about purpose. That was a whole nother live. Y'all go back and check my live on that. You cannot be a master of being someone else. You can only master being yourself. You cannot graduate being someone else. There's nothing wrong with being inspired. Someone asked me, oh, where you get that outfit? Whatever, honey, I tell them. And, you know, I've had, you know, people tell me, why are you telling people where you got your stuff from? I was like, because they made multiple sizes and, and, and numerous quantities. They must wanted other people to buy it. Because Dorsha can wear it and they can wear it. We both going to have two different vibes and it is okay. There ain't no competition. I'm going to do the Dorsha thing and they're going to do the them thing. And it's okay. It is all good. Because if I inspired them, then it's okay. It's when now they're looking like Dorsha. But how's that working out for you? Because what is your goal? You want to get Dorsha's job? Well, good luck with that. Do you want Dorsha? I mean, like, when you start duplicating someone, what you want their life? People will look at the glory in people's life, but not understand the full story. And with the glory, there was a price of pain that they paid. So if you really want their life, then go ahead and take their pain as well. Be inspired by others, but don't copy them. Master being you. You will never graduate being someone else. Michelle, what are you saying? Thank you, Dorsha. Some people get offended by that. It's nothing wrong have wrong having similarities, but not copying. Hey, spooning with Sunshine Homestead. How you doing? I take it that this is the sunshine part of it. But I could be wrong. But if it's spoon, what's up, spoon? <laughs> hey, peekaboo, honey. Peekaboo. People don't know the cost you paid to be the boss. Fran, amen and ouch. Ouch and amen. You know, people want the other side of the story. They want the resurrection glory of the story, but nobody wants the crucifixion side of the story. People get enamored with celebrity lifestyles. Oh, I want that, and I want to be living here, and I don't know. But well, do you want the bills that come along with it? That's all I'm just trying to say. Do you want the bills? <laughs> <Peek -a -boo. laughs> People who have more have more expenses. Peek -a -boo. Number nine, a mistake repeated is a choice. I made a mistake. Oh, my bad. I made a mistake. Oh, you know, I really, really didn't mean to do that. That was a mistake. If you keep on doing it, it's a choice. It ain't a mistake. And built into every choice are consequences. We are free to choose to do whatever we want to, but we're not free from the consequences of our choices. I will not elaborate on that. But y'all already picking up what I'm putting down. And I'm like going on and on. And I don't want to take y'all all night. Because, you know, I made a Mississippi pot roast. And I made some sautéed brassicas, some purple cabbage. And I sliced up some Brussels sprouts. And I put some red grilla tomatoes. And I put some, uh, I mean, um, uh, peppers and some red onions. And I sautéed them, seasoned them very well. And we got some rice in there. And we got a whole thing called a meal. And I know that y'all probably want to enjoy whatever y'all want to enjoy as well. 
So number 10, expect expectations lead to disappointments. Make sure you manage your expectations with at least two of these things, wisdom and grace. There's nothing wrong with having an expectation, but what happens when a person doesn't meet your expectation? Then you're disappointed. Now, everyone that you meet, they're on their path of and their journey of development and growth. So that's why you need to use wisdom and grace. There are sometimes like you may have walked into a particular chapter in my life when I was 21, 23, 25, 32, 35, whatever, and be like. But you can't judge a person's entire life based off of the chapter that you walked in on. Now, the wisdom part comes in to what type of relationship you have with the person are the expectations reasonable? And when they do fall, because people do fall, but they do get up. The Bible says a just man will fall seven times, but he will get up. And when you get up, are they getting up with the right mind? They send grace. Because if you look back over your life and you think about some of the things that you did, some of the things that you are doing, Mm -hmm. extend some grace but use wisdom it's like you have you're in a relationship or something with someone who has a substance abuse problem and they're like <clears throat> I am I'm going to leave that alone I'm not going to do that anymore I'm over it I had my last drink or this that the other and you're like, okay, I'm going to build an expectation. I'm going to hold you to your word. But you know that they're a part of their fraternity. And when their fraternity brothers get together, what did they do? They drink. It's like the crackhead going into the crack house. Now, we know that in order to change that behavior, you can't go around people or environments that are going to tempt you back into what got the monkey on your back. If I was a heroin addict, I can't even walk down that street where that house is because those spirits are going to be calling me there because I have a flesh desire to get back to that feeling that that heroin did. Not a realistic expectation if I tell you, well, yep, I'm giving up heroin, but I'm going to keep on going the same path home every day that I always go. You know, at some point or another, life is going to happen. I'm going to crack. I'm going to break. And I'm going to end up in that crack. I'm going to end up in that heroin house. It happens. And then you'd be looking at me. Well, you said, so you're a liar. <laughs> Person who is feeble, who is weak, who is fighting a spiritual battle, a physical battle. In a mental battle. So at that time, what the person needs more so, you have to re strategize. Well, we know that you can't do this and you can't do it, and all of that sounds, but now you got to come up with, but what you can do and what we can do. Nothing wrong with having expectations, but they will lead to disappointment. It's about how you respond to the disappointment. Do you make a person out to be the worst person ever because they let you down? They let your expectation down. I know there have been times in my life when a person let me down, honey, I can make you feel like, well, why am I breathing? <laughs> and then the Holy Spirit has to come back and check me. Dorsha, why are you expecting this level from this person when they're trying their best? You're expecting A plus behavior from someone who's trying their best to get a C. They're trying their very best to get a C, but you're expecting them to, to get an A. It's not going to happen. But when they do have their moral failures, 
or they end up not doing what they said that they were going to do and they slip and they fall. How do you respond? Because you can't control anybody, but you can control your reaction, your response. Response or reaction is an impulse. So maybe you can't, but you can control your response. Because a response meant that I actually thought about it. And now let me, let me not just react to you. Let me think. And now let me respond. What are y'all talking about? Amen. Use grace, but don't turn a blind eye. Yes, don't turn a blind eye. Come up with solutions. Anyone can point out a problem. People don't know the cost you paid to be money. <laughs> oh my God. But ouch, yes, and amen. <laughs> oh, okay, moving on to the next 11. When you can't change what's happening around you, you can change you. Sometimes you're in situations where, you know, you're on assignment at a job. And God is not going to release you from that assignment until you have learned what he wanted you to learn, gave what he wanted you to give. And there has been an exchange and now he can release you to your next level. And then you're like, but this person doing this and da, 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 da. oh, the noise. If you can't change the environment, then maybe God is prodding you to change you. Change the way that you are looking at it. Instead of seeing a bunch of problems, start coming up with the solutions to the problem. And sometimes you're overreacting by you becoming emotionally involved in something that you're not supposed to give any emotions to. Think about that. What are you giving emotional and mental real estate in your mind that does not belong there, that is not paying a mortgage or rent or any type of insurance to be there? Change you. When you change you, the world around you changes because now you have on different lenses, different perspective, and you can you can raise yourself above the smut and all of the other elements that are happening that you feel is pulling you and drowning you and making you so miserable. Happiness is an inside job. Number 12, silence is sometimes the best answer. Now, when you are a strong personality, sometimes that is the hardest assignment, just to keep your mouth shut. That's right. I learned that every action does not require a reaction. Amen. Dorsha, God sent you all up in my camp this evening. <laughs> ah, Larry said, ouch. <clears throat> when you are a strong personality, and if you're a person that you believe that you know some things and you're knowledgeable and you got wisdom and you got all of this, that, the other, you got the accoutrements of being a well-versed, well-read, discerning person. Sometimes you just don't know how to keep your mouth shut. Sometimes the best answer is no answer. I learned that the hard way. Now, I was told, you know, dealing with this particular person, they are argumentative. They're combative. They have something to say about anything. And even if it was the color of the sky, they're going to have to say, no, it's purple. It's not blue. And I was warned, don't say anything. But I fed into it. Hey, Melissa, how are you doing? Thank you for joining us. Pick a boo. When you get a chance, wish G Mama grows a happy birthday. She is in the chat spending her birthday evening with us. The chat is where it's at. If you're watching this, please come to the chat because the chat is where it's at. <clears throat> Are you trying to win an argument? You can't win an argument with someone who's not hearing you. 
We listen with our ears, but we hear with our heart. And if they're not hearing you, then there is no winning the argument. What you waiting for the person to say, okay, I was wrong and you were right. Let's not fight. Or is it, I'm making a valid point. Would you rather have peace or be right? Because sometimes having both is not an option. Would you rather have peace? And when you give someone a piece of your mind, you're actually giving them pieces of your mind. You're giving them stuff that you need to be retaining to do something that God has ordained and called you to do. Futile argument. Don't be going on social media having arguments with people. <laughs> I delete people, block people. They come on my LinkedIn talking about, oh, saving LinkedIn one soul at a time while you sitting here talking about your imaginary friend named God and Jesus. Delete. I'm not going to sit there and have a conversation with them. Why? It's my platform. It's my canvas. And if I don't want you on there, I can erase you. This is my canvas, my platform. You do what you want to on your own. No, you just want to come on mine because you saw how many likes and how, how it's run. And now you got to come and say something because now this is, I see the spirit that's in operation. And a lot of people don't pay attention to the spirit that's in operation. When you start getting to a certain point in a conversation with someone that's about to turn into an argument, take a step back. Pull, you are the trigger. Pull yourself back. Put the safety back on and be like, what spirit is in operation here? Is it that you think that I think that I'm smarter than you? So now you want to compete with me? Is it because you have low self-esteem? Is it because you're really offended about something else that happened in your day that has absolutely nothing to go on with me and you're taking it out on me? Is it that you're having feelings of inadequacy about whatever? Are you still holding on to some past hurt or something? What is what is this that is going on before I jump into it? And then if I become emotionally engaged, being logically engaged is one thing. But if a person keeps pushing your button, and you become emotionally engaged, then that's when real fireworks can happen. And it doesn't necessarily mean that the fireworks could be with you, it could be with them and them wanting to either now put your name in their mouth, your name in their mouth and go around gossip talking about, well, they said this, that, the other, blah, 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 about you, blah, blah, and start spilling whatever the beans are that happened about that. They wanna get in a fight with you. Oh, now they want the friendship over, blah, blah, blah. When really, all it took was just for one person just to shut their mouth. That is a lot of power. The person who can literally shut their mouth when they're in the middle of something that is becoming a conflict or in the middle of a conflict and say, I choose to control me and I will not let you control me, which goes to my next point of who angers you controls you. Number 13, he who angers you controls you. Song Zhu has said it and some other people have said it. I think they actually said it in the art of war. Song Zhu, he who angers you control you. And one way that we show our anger. So who do you want controlling you? God gave you control over you. I always tell my oldest son, the best gift that you can give to yourself in the world around you is self-control. Self-control. Because if you can control you, then that's going to alleviate a whole lot of problems that you're going to have in life. Period. Self-control. What y'all talking about in the chat? Extraordinary. Ain't nobody got time for that. Sis, I'm here for this. You speaking to me. 
I can't argue with folk. And this is the thing. Some people may not know how to express their emotions in a healthy way. And it is okay. It is okay. It is okay for people not to have mastered some things that you think that you have mastered, which is going to lead us to another one. I'm over here skipping. Don't measure other people's weaknesses based off of your strengths and don't measure your strengths. Uh, don't measure your weaknesses based off of other people's strengths. Don't measure other people's weaknesses based off of your strength. Well, because you do it and you can control it means that they should. No, even in marriages. Well, if y'all both could do the same thing, then one of y'all is not necessary. So there needs to be some growth. And where there's no growth, there's no God, which leads us to another one. <laughs> Look, now y'all got me. Y'all got me all warmed up. Now I'm just skipping all over the place. Let me make sure that y'all got this, okay? Because <laughs> now y'all got me all over the place. Silence is sometimes the best response. Y'all got that. He who angers you controls you. Control yourself. Don't let someone goad you into an argument. It's not that serious. It's crazy the things that people can get in an argument. It can be about a sports team. It can be about Jill and uh, a Will and Jada. So what? What does it mean to you? You're losing sleep over someone else's life. They ain't losing no sleep over you. It don't matter. Well, it's the principle of it. But what do they got to do with you? Let's go into your closet. Let's go into your business. That's the business. That's the real business. For real, real. Don't measure other people's strengths based. Don't measure other people's weaknesses based off of your strengths. And don't compare your weaknesses against other people's strengths. You do yourself a disservice. In the first scenario where you're comparing their weaknesses off of your strengths, you're, you're operating in a spirit of arrogance. That's what that is. And if you didn't know it, I'm here to help you. It's called arrogance. Because now you don't put yourself there. So now they're there. And now the inverse of it is, well, I wish I could do that. And that person is so good when it comes to talking and I can't do that. Why are you measuring your, your, you may not be the best orator and you're going to measure your speaking off of someone who's great at public speaking. Don't do that to yourself. Because now you're sitting here making inadequacies and developing low self-esteem within yourself because you're comparing yourself to someone else's strength. Let them be great at speaking. Maybe that's not your thing. Find your thing and be great at that. And just praise people when they're walking in their gift. That's the easy remedy for that. Stop comparing yourself against somebody else. Oh, well, shoot, we the same age and she that size, whatever. Are you eating what she eat? Do you exercise the way she look? Then why are you compare yourself? Do y'all have the same medical history? You have the same thyroid problem? Like, what are you doing? Stop it. That's not fruitful. It's causing you to go places in your mind that is unnecessary. Hmm. Well, you know, I don't know what's going on with them because, you know, I would never do that. You know, uh, I got at least, you know, I, I keep 50000 in my bank and, and they over there. I don't know what they doing over there. Well, that's great. You're wonderful when it comes to finances. But maybe they're, they're, they're better when it comes to spending time with their um, family. Maybe their children actually like them. Maybe their spouse actually honors them and, and don't pretend to be something that they're not in front of their face and doing something behind their back. Don't compare your strength to someone else's weaknesses. It's just that I've been guilty of it. I promise you on everything for real, real. But the Holy Ghost, ultimate teacher, like Dorsha, uh-uh. You're great when it comes to that. And you're going to compare them. That's not apples and apples. 
because then you could do the opposite. Well, compare an area that they're great and then you're weak. So okay. guess what? I took the correction. So now I'm mindful of it. They're not good when it comes to that. But if I am, then there's an opportunity for me to bless someone. And not unsolicited. When a person is sharing with you, hey, I'm not good at doing my makeup and I like the way that you do your makeup and da 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 da. Oh, okay. Nothing. Here, let me send you a picture of what I got, blah, blah, blah. You want to call my house? I can do da 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 da. No big deal. It ain't like, oh, yeah, I'm one up on you. Yeah, you like how I'm wrong. No. When a person knows that you care about them and that you love them and that you have no agenda or ill intention, they can accept correction from you. They can accept feedback from you and they can accept, you know, nuggets to help grow you because then they're just like, I know that this person has my best intention at heart, but that's something that they got to know. That's not something that you, that you can prove them or make them know. Okay. Hey, Sunday backyard farmer. How you doing? Michelle, you said you're going to get me. <laughs> what did I do? Tell me, what did I do? I want to know. I want to know what I did. I want you to tell me. See, I promised that I wasn't going to sing and you made me sing. Everyone, y'all point y'all finger at Michelle. Y'all know y'all didn't want to hear me sing tonight. Dosha. Hey, Melissa, pick a boo. Everyone say hello to Sunday Backyard Farmer, the man, the myth, the legend, the husband. Hmm. Oh, thanks, babe. Oh. <laughs> She's talking to my husband. <laughs> Ouch. Woo! Larry is still playing along. Lawrence Tuck, y'all. Y'all. He said, ouch. The, the name of the game, if for those who wanted to indulge, if you get to a point where you learned that lesson, you say amen. If you're still having some issues in that area, then you say ouch. <laughs> but guess what? You can get to the amen part. She is walking on my street. Woo! <laughs> Black tropical home day. Girl, the girl right there is funny. And since we're in the same vein of thought, silence is sometimes the best answer. He who angers you controls you. The best gift you can give to yourself is self-control and the world around you. Imagine how many men or women, if they had self-control and did not have sex with whoever they were having a love jones for, if they just had self-control, how many unwanted pregnancies and babies would have been in the, if, if. Now, some people say, oh, you know, but because the seed, the, the sperm hit the egg and it was meant to be by God, not necessarily. And, you know, everyone, they take this paintbrush and they do a broad stroke with the word of God. But I'm a student of the word. You know, do you think by any chance that God was pleased or what, what David did? And when he laid down with Bathsheba, somebody else's wife. No. And he killed his child. He killed their child. He snatched the life out of that baby. So don't tell me that every life that happens, that what God intended and it just, no, it don't. And he will snatch it and he will take it. And God has sent armies of people to go in and literally kill everybody. Pregnant women, babies, everything. But that's a whole nother subject. We'll talk about that some other time if the spirit leads. <laughs> <sighs> so um, don't measure other people's strengths against your weaknesses or their weaknesses against your strength. No is a whole sentence. No is an entire sentence. Now, I want everybody... Put your hand on your chest so you can feel that reverberation coming from your spirit, man. No. Say it. Say no. No exclamation. No. With a period. Go ahead. Say no in the chat. Put no in period. That is a whole sentence. Are y'all going to come to the family reunion. No. 
You don't have to say, no, we're not going to come because he's acting funny and he was offended the last time that we came. And so now he don't want to come. And, you know, and I'm I'm not going to come because he don't. Just say no. No. Well, why? Because we're not going to be able to make it this time. But I hope y'all have a good time. Make sure you send me some pictures. Hey, girl, you want to go to the concert? Da, 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 da. No. Okay. Okay. So what else is going on? You want to go on this couple's trip with us? No. Well, why not? It, it's just, we, we don't want to go on the couple's trip. But you know what? This is what happened. Because we're so used to explaining ourselves that now people feel entitled to know the other side. They feel entitled. If I wanted to explain, I would have said no because. But when I say no, it just means no. Let someone say, well, hey, happy life. How are you doing? You came into the building. And I see all the no's. <clears throat> are you going to hire that person? No. No. And they're waiting. But I don't say anything. And then you know what? Because now I'm known for my no. Then that that's it. Because once people know your character and they know how you move, then they know that whatever that reason is, is valid. And it's based on some principle. And she don't have to share it. Because if Dorsha wanted to share it, then she would have shared it. Pick a boo. Get to the point where your yes means yes and your no means no. The Bible says, let your yay be yay, yet your nay be nay, and anything else is of the devil. Let your yay be yay and let your nay be nay, and anything else is of the devil. Don't get in there to explain it and because it is or uh, da, 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 or then you end up telling a little white lie and be like, no, it ain't a white lie. A black lie is just a whole lie. Well, I'm not feeling well, you know. Oh, and then be like, hey, where you want to go out to eat? He just didn't want to go with them and it's okay. We'll catch you next time. <laughs> it's okay. It's the end of the story. Hmm, what are you talking about, Mr. Tuck? Huh, never saw it like that. Us feeling like we have to explain ourselves. Yes, because we have a culture. Okay, well, why? Why? You feel entitled to my why. I already responded and it was a no. You know, very simple. Um, y'all ever been invited to um what hey Cheryl Faulkner, how are you doing? Thank you for coming. Hey Shirley Smith, no, hi, Mrs. Dorsha and everyone in the chat. Hey, how are y'all doing? Thank you for coming out. I appreciate you. Hey, J3GS. How are you doing? Think about this. You've been you've been invited to a wedding, right? And there's a RSVP card. And if you're attending, you know, you can put the number or whatever. And sometimes it's just a yes or a no. On the RSVP card, does it ask you why you're not coming? Does, are, is it asking you why? <laughs> it's simple. Either you're coming or you're not coming. Either you're coming or you're not coming. Hey, sifting me some soil. How are you doing? Thank you for joining us this evening. I'll do a recap real quick. I'm going to get through this. So no is a whole sentence. The next one. 16. There is more than one way to solve a problem. Be open. You're either solving problems or creating them. Case in point. If I said to you right now, five plus four equal nine. 
is that the only way that you can take numbers to equal the number nine? In the chat, give me other solutions to reach the number nine with addition. I said five plus four equals nine. So imagine I'm talking to someone, a child, five plus four equals nine. That's the answer, five plus four. No, right, Michelle, three plus three plus three equals nine as well. Six plus three equals nine as well. Two plus seven equals nine. Seven plus two equals nine. Y'all get it? <clears throat> Nine plus zero equals nine. Just because you are used to doing something a certain way doesn't mean that it can't be done another way. So don't be so quick to correct somebody when there's no problem. If there's a problem, then you can offer suggestions and correction but if there's not a problem and someone's telling you well it works there's multiple solutions eight plus one we are on a ball tonight so many different answers or options yes just like gardening exactly mm -hmm. 511 may work for Aunt Linda, but someone else may not use 511. They may use black cow. Someone else may use bunny rabbit drippings. Somebody else may use chicken. Somebody else may not use anything, honey. They might have came up with their own concoction. But if it is working for them, don't come on someone else's solution creating a problem talking about well no you need to be doing it this way they ain't got a problem it's working it's working don't be so eager to be heard instead of being an observer look before you speak because you could just be creating more problems when a person like, well, everything was fine. And you're like, well, no, it need to be done this way. And they're like, no, it need to be done. No, I got this. Da -da. No, da -da. no, da -da. and now you got a problem because now the person is feeling some type of way about you. Now you're going to create that argument where there was peace just because you're used to your way of doing it. But just because it's your way don't mean there's not multiple ways. You're either creating problems or solving them. Yes, just like cooking. Somebody may cook their, their eggs this way, that way, da 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 da. They may use oil, they may not use oil, whatever the case is. If it's working for you, honey, we are good. Absolutely. I always say that about marriage too. What works for one may not work. It may not. You know what I mean? And you can't rubber stamp it. Because remember, whoever that person is, they chose that spouse. Now, you do have people that covet other people's spouses. But they're only coveting the image of that spouse. They're coveting what they see that is clothed and is out there for display. They're not there when all hell is breaking loose. They're not there when the, the, the bad times are bad for real, real. Right? They'd be like, okay. So that's why even when it comes to giving people marriage a voice, tread lightly. Because remember, at the end of the day, they chose that. They chose that passion and they chose that poison and everything in between. Tread lightly. Dorsha, you are on one tonight. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. I need gift for this live. What's gift? What's that? Golf? G-L-F. What's that? Uh, <clears throat> help me also with sister. Number... 17. Don't expect someone to be to you what you can't be to yourself. Don't expect someone to be to you 
what you can't be to yourself. Now, I'm not talking about, oh, we all are built equally. We all should have the same virtues and values and da, 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 da. No, because if both of y'all are alike, then one of y'all not necessary. And even in friendships, if your friends are identical clones of you, then maybe you don't have friends. Maybe you have fans or followers. And there is a place for fans and followers. But friendship is different. Right now, by a show of hands, who do you have in your life that you will accept correction from without an argument? That they can check you and say, nah, bro, nah, bro, mm -mm. nah, that was dead wrong. You wrong, and you say, nah, nah, but see, you know what she was saying? That I nah, nah, you were wrong, and you need to make that right. Nah, girl, mm -mm, mm -mm. nah, 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 no, 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 no. And some people believe that that person, you know, should be your spouse. Well, there's a lot of contempt that's built with familiarity. And that's why people who are in close relationships can usually take advice from someone who isn't as close. Because what happens in closer relationships is, is that you're able to see the other per person's flaws as well. So therefore, you're sitting here telling me what not to do, but then I'm seeing you over here doing A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, hold yourself accountable to the same measurement stick. Okay, we just got different issues. Blah, blah, blah. So that's why God, you know, don't have us living in isolation with just the two people. He sends you a village. He sends you a tribe. Some people can get it out of their church or place where they work or affiliations, association, different relationships that they've had. But the Bible says in the multitude of counsel not just one person, in the multitude of counsel, there is wisdom. It's good to be able to get it from other perspectives. Get, 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 some, get, get some perspective from someone who's older than you. Get it from someone who's your age. Maybe get it from someone who's a little younger than you. Maybe seeing it from a different little age man. Get it from someone who may be of a different culture, a different da da and then you take that all together and you and you 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 spew out the bones, you spew out what don't work, blah 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 blah, da da da. And you take it all before the throne, before the phone, be like, all right, God. All right, God. What should I do? What should I do in this situation? And if he say, be still, I don't care. Your mama could say, no, what you need to do, is you need to do da, da, da. your best friend could say, da, 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 so and so and so and so. But when God tells you to be still, it's not up for discussion. You know, I was going through a challenge or something in my life and people were like, well, when are you going to do this? When are you going to do that? I said, the Holy Spirit said, be still. Well, you know, uh, are you sure that you don't, you're not struggling with unforget? Are you, blah, blah, no. I, I forgive people the way that I want God to forgive me. That, 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 that is the goal. That's on a day to day. I just got to process whatever pain I'm going through, but forgiveness, it, it's theirs. Just like it's mine. Like I need the blood of Jesus. That, that, ain't, that ain't optional. I need the blood of Jesus. I need that purification. I need my sins washed away on a daily basis. I have the crucified Dorsha's flesh afresh every day. So when it comes, yeah, you hurt me. I forgive you. I can forgive you and we can abide and we I can forgive you and we can go our separate way. Paul had to leave one of his com comrades in the gospel they were close but they had to go their separate way does that mean that he didn't he didn't for, forgive them no we just come to this part where we got to go our separate ways 
because there's a greater purpose and a greater call on our lives. And that don't mean that we can't still be great people. We just can't do it walking on the same path, right? But you need, you need someone and it'll be great if you can have some bodies because now you could have some people in your life that we addressed earlier who have expired, expired. And you're still holding them around. It's like that, that milk in the refrigerator. It done expired, expired. What you still holding on to it for? They have expired and they're still one of your counselors. This is why God is not sending you your spouse. This is why God is not releasing you to your next job. This is why God hasn't released you to move to Atlanta so you and Dorsha can go and eat together. No, just joking. Because <laughs> they have expired and you're holding on to these people and they're still giving you counsel. And the counsel sues your flesh man and it is not edifying your spirit man and so i did want to put that caveat out there because just because you're getting counsel make sure it's godly counsel you need somebody in your life that you know has a connection to the father because if sometimes there's distortion between you and him you need to talk to someone that you know keep him on the main line and the old things, y'all know what I'm talking about. You need to be with someone. It was just like, you know, there was someone I know, they were going through some marital problems, whatever, whatever. And then, you know, she comes around in the conversation, asked me, oh, what should she do? Should she divorce him? And I asked her a couple of questions. But I didn't, I didn't, she asked me, what would I do? And I said, that's not fair for you to ask, what would I do? Because I left a person for less, right? Because what I was facing is, be married and go to hell or go to heaven divorce and i had to choose and it was very painful because i was going to go straight to hell on a banana peel and the holy spirit told me that and i started bawling crying on an airplane said you're going to go to hell and you need to get out of this right now or you're going to hell and i'm like but i thought god loved marriage you ought to marry yeah, but if something is causing you to sin, then you need to cut it off. You know, it's like back when they had um, Hammurabi's code. And if your arm causes you to sin, cut that off. If your eye causes you to sin, cut that off. If your marriage causes you not to serve God, then you need to cut it off. There is no relationship on this earth that is more important and more special and should be more privileged than your relationship with God because you were created for his pleasure and for his purpose you chose marriage there aren't a lot of people who God has joined together God put Eve with Adam he joined them together a lot of people they like well I'm together with him because you make a good mom. Don't want to be your husband. I'm going to still run them streets, but you make a good mother. <laughs> You'll be a good husband because you're going to help me pay these bills and get this lifestyle that I want so I can get me some nice Instagram photos. Um, no, God didn't bring y'all together. Now, that don't mean that he can't turn around if you submit to him and then to one another. Turn it around and work it in your favor so that your marriage can be a sweet aroma in his nostrils. Because whatever it is that we're engaging and we're doing, when you choose to become a parent, and even if you didn't choose, you'd be like, Lord, I'm using this as an opportunity to bless you, Lord. The way that I raise these children, let this be my sacrifice to you. This marriage let this be my sacrifice to you. When it gets to a point where that thing, whatever that thing is, is causing a rift between you and God and it's something that you chose, you need to cut it off. Well, she asked me, what should she do? And I just asked some simple questions. Well, 
Do you still love them? Da 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 da. -da. So and so and so and so. Okay. You don't have a heartening of a heart. You just have to realize that this thing that he does, this is what he do. And that you like your lifestyle. So you don't want to give up lifestyle and he has this proclivity. Put on your big girl and deal with it. Because for me, I'll give up some lifestyle. I'll be sleeping on the floor, honey. I will sleep on the floor. I don't care. I have had times when I was homeless. I was sleeping on this person's floor for six months. But it meant I could sleep in peace. I'd rather have my peace. And if I have my peace, then I can flow in my gift. And then God can use me. And if I don't have the peace and I can't flow in my gift because I'm so busy caught up into the cares of this world and sitting here trying to protect myself from people who are supposed to protect me, then I'm always in combat mode instead of service mode. I'd rather walk in service mode. But there are people who want people to come and rescue them. How are you going to expect somebody to help you and you can't help yourself? Don't expect from others what you won't do for yourself. If I want a nice car, I buy myself a nice car. I'm not waiting. I wasn't waiting for Sunday to come in my life to buy me a nice car. If you want a house, buy yourself a house. Don't be like, well, I'm waiting on a husband and then I can buy a house. Buy a house. And if he got a house and y'all got two houses and y'all can say, that can be an Airbnb and we can, we can Airbnb it or we can take the equity out of both of them and get us something bigger. Y'all can do whatever. Just don't be coming up with you. Don't expect somebody to do something for you that you can't do for yourself. And don't even put unrealistic expectations on somebody. Well, I want somebody who got an 800 credit score. What's your credit score look like? 800 da, da, da. well maybe god wants you to be in their life because they got more money than you and you got an excellent credit score you ever thought about that it happens in the real world take your credit score with that money y'all can build a whole life okay you know remember the thing about not comparing your strengths against someone else's weaknesses and then nah, 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 nah. i want someone with a six pack well you walking around looking like you pregnant why you want a man with a six pack and you look like you still got the baby up in you and your child is like 15 years old? Pick a boo. <laughs> Don't ask somebody to be something to you that you can't be to yourself. What y'all talking about in the chat? I'm almost finished. I'm going to let y'all go. Because y'all be like, I ain't going to come back next Wednesday, Dorsha. You talk too long. <laughs> Pass the collection plate. Pick a boo. <laughs> cash app, cash app. No, <laughs> no cash app. I'm good. Um, <clears throat> 18. Self pity is a form of self worship. And you know the Trinity that you are worshiping with your self pity. It is the unholy trinity of me, myself, and I. Self-pity is a form of self-worship. And you have created an altar. Well, why didn't I get that? Or why couldn't I be taller? Or why can't I do that? And why couldn't I marry somebody who was more entrepreneurial? Why can't I do that? And why can't I have more followers on YouTube? And why is this person blowing up? And why can't it happen to me? And why I? And why can't I have children? And why Why did I have all these children? And why I, I, and me, and woe is me, and me, myself, and I? You just created an altar and you're bound down to me, myself, and I, because that's what's in your focus and that's what matters most to you. No, I serve other people. People just don't treat me the way I treat them. And I, and I, oh, pull out the violins, work until the real world. There are people who call this 
they use they use people like they use things. You just operate on a different code. You use things and not people. But get over it. What are you experiencing that is just an anomaly that nobody else in the history of mankind has never experienced? Oh, whoa. Hey, I used to feel that. Like, oh my God. Can I get somebody to be my cheerleader? Can I do that? I'm tired. Da, 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 da. And it's just like, that's your gift. Exhortation. It comes with a prophetic mantle. It's okay. And in due season, God will send you who it is that you need. So whatever it is that you're gifted in, do that. Keep doing it and be great at it. Don't turn it into a violent. Well, I can't have, I can't have children. Well, maybe he wanted you to mother somebody else. Maybe he didn't want you to have a biological. Or maybe he knew that when you had that child that you were going to end up dying on the table doing childbirth. And he found more value in you than that child. I'm just saying. Why don't you have someone with an entrepreneurial spirit? Maybe God told you to be the entrepreneur. Don't expect someone to be something that you can't be to yourself. Next. Well, the self-pity is a form uh, of self-worship. And then I think we're almost there. We only got two more. Y'all ready? Are y'all ready? Sometimes the best pain relief is serving others. Sometimes, the other times, it may be isolation because God will put you in like a cocoon and he'll isolate you because in that cocoon, he's working on you, through you, to you and preparing you for this height that you're about to go on, right? So he'll put you in a cocoon and that's for your protection. It may feel lonely in the cocoon, and it does, because I've been in a cocoon several times. I call them them moments of darkness where I felt like I was in darkness. And I'd be like, God, have you forsaken me? Like, this is, my life is not looking like anything that I thought it was going to look like. And I served you for real, real. And I obeyed your concepts and huh. And yes, and when I fell short, God, I asked you to forgive me. And I meant it and I didn't do that again. And but yeah, I did find another sin, but then I didn't do that. And da 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 da, da and so on, so on, so on, so on. And then he says, Dorsha, I ain't looking for perfection. I'm looking for faithfulness, honey. So this is the faithful part. That when you don't see my hand. can't see it it's dark then trust my heart trust that i have a plan and a purpose for you i mean you no harm and there is a future for you but i have a process and there's some things i need to build in you and there's some things i need to protect you from and even from yourself so i'll put you in the cocoon but there's another time and there's a lot of time and i want you to know this you're going through pain and god wants you to literally serve somebody else you work your way through that pain by serving somebody else someone else needs a word of encouragement someone else needs a cash app today somebody else needs a card someone else just needs a hello somebody else just needs hey sis your hair is looking good today. They don't need you to be figuring out whether it's real or fake. They just need to know that, oh, you looking nice today, sis. Oh, I like them earrings. I like that. Oh, your nails look nice. Da, da, da. Hey, brother, you know what? That was dope what you said the other day. Man, that daggone videography on that video you did, bro. That's what I'm talking about. You don't know how much your kind words 
can reshape a whole atmosphere in someone's life. You can literally take them from a couple of feet from the cliff to come back, come back some more. And then God will send somebody else and God will send somebody else and God's play your part. Because if not, then you're sitting there in your pool of pain. And then that turns into an altar of, of self-pity, which is self-worship of the unholy trinity of me, myself, and I. So instead of having self-pity, me, myself, and I, woe is me, the violin, da, 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 we all been through some stuff. People been molested, raped, they've been abandoned. No parents, some parents don't know who their parents are. But turn what the devil meant to harm you into something good and help others find their way to the light, even in the middle of your pain. Some of the best ministry that I have had in my life and the people on LinkedIn didn't even know what I was going through and I was going through for real, real. I mean, going to sleep in tears and waking up in tears. And But I was faithful because God told me the ministry of one. If you can reach one person every day, Monday through Friday on LinkedIn, you paying your rent here because I gave you a gift. And you're going to use this gift. And when I started out, I was like, Lord. And when he said reach, he literally meant reach. He didn't mean reaction. He meant reach. I'd be like, Lord, it was like five people that saw this post. <laughs> and you know what the Holy Spirit said? You reached one person. And then the next, it was like, oh, 10 people. I reached 10 people, Jesus. Ooh. Right? When you can't trace God, you must trust God. Amen, friend. Absolutely. Words are powerful. We went over this in Bible study today. Speak life into others. Yes, Jeanette. Serve through your pain. If God has not called you into isolation, then you need to be serving. We are created for the horizontal the vertical and the horizontal. We were not created to live life alone. God will download to us in the vertical and the other part of our cross experience is the horizontal. That is your cross. You and God and others help somebody else. It's hard to sit there and make someone else laugh and be sitting there crying at the same time you're laughing with them while you're lifting them up because every time you lift them up it lifts you up and guess what even if i woke up in the morning in tears as soon as i finished my linkedin post guess what smile was on my face and then the beautiful thing about god is he'll use the people that you're ministering to to minister back to you my inbox in linkedin is full of messages of people saying I needed this today, sis. Oh, you blessed me, sis. Oh, I shared this with my children. Although, I mean, it is tons. It is countless. I stopped counting. I was like, Lord. But when it happens, I thank the person, but then I'm smiling because I know that my father, that God, I was like, I received that. Thank you. I felt like he kissed me on my forehead. He said, it's going to be okay. I wanted you to know. God uses people. You want to be like, I don't see God in my life. God uses people. Satan uses people. God uses people. He used people. You know, I told you the other day on the community board on um, YouTube, I was going outside of the house and I was just having a blah, blah day, whatever. And I just felt blah, blah. But I was taking care of business. And the teenage girl put the note on my um, receipt at Chick-fil-A. Oh, by the way, you look pretty. I'm like, Okay. Like, thank you. Now, I couldn't thank her. I was long gone, but I was like, thank you, God, because that was his way, because he hears my inner thoughts. I just said, I just feel so oof today. And then it comes back with that. You feel ugh, but I say you're pretty. And so I, I received it, right? God will find different ways to 
commune and communicate to you. I was out there in them streets for a greater purpose, serving, you know, someone else. But I just, I felt like, oh my God, I wish I could just be home, you know. But, you know, I ended up with a, a blessing. Now, the last one. And I really want this one to stick. Where there is no growth, there is no God. Now, you can take that check to the bank and cash it. <clears throat> and you can apply it. Spread that thing like jelly and peanut butter. It could be at your church. Churches are meant to increase because souls should be being led to Christ. And once you're led, then you need to grow. And then when you grow and then you're out there and then you're becoming rays of sunshine. Matter of fact, go to justdorsha.com. Go to Inspires, click now, and then you can go to my new hashtag Soul Food merch store. Rays of Sunshine, one of my t-shirts. Rays of Sun, S-O-N. Let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify your Father that is in heaven. I don't care if you're male, female, whatever. You are called and commissioned to be a ray of sunshine, of Jesus shine, sunshine. You don't really got no shine. We are reflections of his light, okay? We are reflections of his light. If there is no growth, there is no God. If you're not growing at your job, have you ever considered that it's the expiration. It's time for you to move on. Jesus cursed the fig tree. It wasn't growing. It wasn't producing. It wasn't doing what it was supposed to be doing. No growth, no God. God is not a dead God. He's a living God. This word that I'm telling you about, it's a living word. There ain't no... Only thing that needs to be dead is your sins and, you, and the old you. That's buried, but you, you're resurrected. You're a new creation through Christ. New thinking, new talking, new walking, new action. You should be able to see the growth within your own self. I don't, I, I don't respond. I don't react the way that I used to. I respond differently. Things hit me differently. I don't have to come back at, at people the way that I used to. Now I can just shut my mouth and be like, okay. Yes. Now, recap. Yes. Yes. I don't know what y'all talking about. But like G Mama says, hit that thumbs up button if you are watching. Thank you, EJ. That sums it up. So I'll just read them off real quick. But you know, y'all can catch the, um, the replay. Number one, praise in public, correct in private. Number two, assumptions are the lowest level of knowledge by which we can operate. Number three, forgiveness is a gift that you give to yourself. A heart of stone seals your grave, not the other person's. Number four, don't fear failure, fear not trying. Number five, don't allow others to create your world. They will make it too small. Number six, money and time are seeds. Invest them wisely. Number seven, your voice becomes your child's inner voice. Number eight, you can be inspired by someone, but don't copy them. You can't graduate being someone else. Number nine, a mistake repeated as a choice. Number 10, expectations lead to disappointment. Manage your expectations with wisdom and grace. Number 11, when you can't change what's happening around you, change yourself. Number 12, silence is sometimes the best response. Number 13, no is a whole sentence. Number 14, who angers you, controls you. Number 15, don't measure other people's strengths against your weaknesses or their weaknesses against your strengths. Number 16, there is more than one way to solve a problem. Be open. You're either solving problems or making them. 
Number 17, don't expect someone to be what you can't be to yourself. Number 18, self-pity is a form of self-worship. Number 19, sometimes the best pain relief is serving others. And number 20, where there's no growth, there's no God. Did anyone get out of anything out of this tonight? I pray that you did. And remember this, even if you feel like, you know, you mastered all of this or some of it was good, some of it wasn't, whatever. Hey, on YouTube, sharing is caring. Okay, so share it with someone. It could be, it could be something in this list of 20 that somebody needs to hear that will minister to them, right? Um, I felt led, you know, to be able to share this with you. And, you know, of course, you know, the enemy will always talk to you. Well, you're sitting there telling them all this. They probably know all of that stuff, you know. But when the Holy Spirit leads you, just be obedient. Because it's better to be obedient than to sacrifice. There's something that I could have said or put a certain way that could have awakened something in somebody's mind or in their spirit, whatever, right? Because as long as I live on this earth, I am going to let my light shine for Christ so that people can see my good works and glorify my Father in heaven. So I hope that this was beneficial to you, that you got something out of it. And if you can, please hit that thumbs up button, share it, like it, whatever. And next week, I will have a special guest with me. She is a relationship therapist. She will give tools for having healthy relationships. And now I'm going to come into the chat to um, see what y'all are talking about real quick before we go. And um, if you're going to drop off right now, I want you to be blessed. And um, know that just Dorsha always going to have something for you. I ain't a perfect person, but I am faithful to my service, to my Lord, my personal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I promise you, I only have the best intentions for you and for your well-being. And um, I wish you all the best, all the blessings. Now, I'm going to go into the chat, but for those who can stick around, I want us to sing happy birthday to G Mama Gross because today is her birthday. And I feel so honored, G Mama, that you have chosen to spend your birthday evening with me moderating. Cash app, cash app. And you can cash app G Mama Gross at cash app G Mama Gross. You see her name and you can cash app her there. So if you can. I already did. I wouldn't ask you to do anything that I already haven't done. Please cash app G Mama Grow. She is one, if not the best, one of the best moderators out here on these YouTube streets. I promise you, you get a channel, check out G Mama Grow. EJ, thank you so much for being with us. I know I took a, a lot of the time, whatever. And uh, well, I won't apologize because, you know, when the Holy Spirit is in play, if the Lord is leading me, you know, and then there's replay. People can get off, get on, whatever. So I won't want to apologize, but I do thank you for sharing your evening with me. Um, Grace, this was very informative, Dorsha. I'm glad that you um, got something out of it. Grace, and thank you for being here, Shirley. Amen and yes. Hey, Larry, what you talking about? Dorsha, please thank your family for sharing you with us. We appreciate you and your ministry. Nuggets, nuggets, nuggets. Thank you, Larry, for being here this evening. Sifting some soil. Yes, thank you so much. Happy life. Really good life. Well, thank you, happy life, for being here. Um, Jeanette Guest, thank you so much. Sunshine, love that last one. Yes. Wait a minute. Love that last one. Fran, what is Fran saying? Dorsha, thank you for allowing God to use you to bless us tonight. May God continue to bless you and your family abundantly. Thank you. And likewise to you, sis. Happy birthday. I love you, Dorsha. Oh, you are love back, sis. You are love back. Amen. What an amazing blessing. Great live. Thank you, Shirley Smith. And thank you, extraordinaire. Good night. So before we get out of here, <clears throat> everybody in your best chat voice with your emojis because I want us to emoji her up. Well, I don't really know how to work the emojis on these extremely hard, but I want y'all 
to let her have it in this chat with his birthday. And I'm going to sing happy birthday. Hey, Auntie. Hey, that's why we got um, uh, replay. But thank you for, for stopping in. Amir, you going to help me sing happy birthday? Don't worry about it. I got it. <clears throat> I'm an artist and I'm serious about my... <clears throat> Uh, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear G Mama Grove. Happy birthday to you. Now my son's gonna help me sing the other version. Come on. Come on. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Yay! G Mama Grove. Yay, happy birthday. I was forced into this, guys, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Woo. I love, I love my sons. You hear me? You, you you see, they are, they are, they are some good sports. Like Sharifa be in the kitchen with me now, mirror them saying, you know. The, these children, they got some potential. These are future leaders of the world. I promise you. Anyway, turn up the music. Make some noise. It's my dog's birthday. It's my dog's birthday. Turn up the music. That's my husband. That's um, that's the song that they sing at um, when I go to my in-laws in Bainbridge, Georgia. Turn up the music. Make some noise. It's my dog's birthday. It's my dog's birthday. There you go, G Mama. You done got it all, honey. You done got all kinds of versions of happy birthday. We appreciate you. We love you. Oh, Felicia, how are you doing? We're about to sing goodbye, but we love you. Thank you for coming. Y'all make sure y'all catch that replay. Sharing is caring and go on my community tab because um yeah for those for those um who don't know go to my community tab oh wait a minute and did Leslie Leslie y'all are good <laughs> ah, Leslie thank you so much for um for um joining us tonight look Felicia don't be tardy for the party woo woo don't be tardy for the party. Anyway, um, <clears throat> go to my community tab. I have a survey on my community tab. And I'm asking like a couple things. They're just fun things. They're not something really, really deep, whatever. Whether you put salt or sugar in your grits. And the other one is about um, how do you like your coffee? And there's a graphic and it has a whole array of whatever, you know, you like for your coffee. And then the one about the salt and grits. And let me see if the other one's on there. Yeah. Yeah. And then check out my um, check out my short of Sunday outside with his gun, getting serious with them squirrels that have been over there um, going going through our um, crops. Well, yeah, it's it's getting ugly, people. But yeah. Oh, and if you can, please check out my garden update video that I uploaded today. I really appreciate that. But yeah, I don't know if y'all can see that, but it's the salt and sugar debate. So right now I got 87% of the people, they do salt in their grits. And then the other 13%, um, they put sugar in their grits. So yeah, I just want to know, just, you know, anyway, have a good night. Love y'all. And let me pray with everyone as we go our separate ways. Are y'all okay for this prayer? Put your hands like this if you're ready for the prayer. I don't see no squirrel stew. Oh, no, she did not say that. Oh, 
honey, you've been eating that by yourself, sis. I'm tired. I'm about to tell you something. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day and yet another opportunity to live, love, and serve you. Thank you, God, for this time of fellowship, for this time of sharing, Lord. In all that we do, we want to be able to be able to be vessels to be used by you so that your light can shine in us and through us. And Lord, I ask you that for every ear that has heard this, that they walked away with something, something that is a reflection of you and your infinite wisdom, your grace, all of the attributes that come along with you, Lord. Not about Dorsha, but about you, Lord that they have some remnants of what looks like you, to be like you. And we give you all the praise and the glory and let them have a perfect sleep and a perfect rest tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. And everyone said, amen, 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 amen. I'm out of here. Till next Wednesday, I'll see you. Same spot, seven o'clock, and I have a special guest.